What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday morning to you all. Hope you guys are having a great start to your week. Uh, there's a lot to talk about in this morning's video as I'm expecting a pretty active day in the weather world with excessive heat and a big time line of thunderstorms that potentially could move to the Ohio Valley and even get into areas of the Mid-Atlantic and maybe even sneak into areas and maybe like Virginia, the Carolinas a little bit later tonight, but there's definitely some model disagreement there. So we're going to break down what's going to go on. We're going to talk about each state. We're not going to get super specific, like mention every single town and city, but we're going to try to break it down as good as we can, because this might take some people by surprise today. When you have this big time heating that occurs sometimes, you can really have explosive thunderstorms. They don't always hit everyone, but when they do hit, sometimes they can be rather intense. So let's try to figure out what's going to unfold today. So um, you guys could be weather aware. If you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Hit me up on Facebook. It's a great way to stay connected. And Twitter if you're big on social media. If you're not, that's perfectly fine. It's just a great way to um, stay up to date with the latest and greatest information. If you guys got anything that I can pray about, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it. And it gives a lot of others an opportunity to do so, too. So let's get rolling this morning. I don't want to hold you guys up too long because it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer morning video. So right now, this is the watches and warnings. We're really going to talk about the storms first, and we're going to talk about the heat towards the end. But we'll start this off by saying there is a ton of heat advisories. Any county that you see in the orange, I know this is really small, you're under a heat advisory. So the purple you see here, that is actually an excessive heat warning. So uh, the, the red that you see is excessive heat watch. So you could get upgraded to a warning. But just in general, everybody's going to be a hot. Even the areas that isn't labeled any kind of warning criteria or watch criteria, you're going to be rather hot today too. And I'm really talking about these areas in Georgia and the Carolinas, Tennessee, North Carolina, that do not necessarily have a heat advisory right now. You guys are going to be rather hot. So... Just keep that in mind. Keep your, you know, you should probably just bring your animals inside, even if it's just an outside animal. Just, you know, just be cautious and just be mindful of things that maybe not necessarily every day you are mindful of. Your animals definitely have feelings too, like most of y'all know. So definitely take the precautions there. Obviously, don't leave your kid in the car. We all know that. And uh, just be safe when it comes to the heat today because it is going to be brutal out there for a lot of folks. Maybe not quite as bad as yesterday as far as widespread, but really the worst is beginning to shift east and build north, if you will. So uh, keep that in mind today. Let's take a look at the water vapor loop. Really, your eyes go to this. Uh, the ridging of high pressure is building over this part of the country. So what we call a pattern called the ring of fire. So basically, you have a big time ridge that builds over a certain part of the country. In this case, it's building over this part of the country. And then all your energy, all your storms, uh, showers, whatever it may be, likes to flow around this high pressure as wind direction goes this way around high pressure. And depending on where it's situated, which will be right around this area, uh, storms will go this way and then they'll come back south from the north. And then sometimes, if say if you're in this area of Alabama and Georgia and the high pressure's up here, storms can come in uh, from the northeast and move southwest, which is a rather unusual storm movement here in the southeast. But this is what happens when you have big time high pressure overhead and it's situated in a certain position geographically. So with this, you're going to have this leftover piece of energy that is still packing a punch in areas of the north central U.S. This is going to move through the Ohio Valley today, through areas like Illinois here in the morning hours and throughout the midday to afternoon hours, Indiana, Ohio, portions of eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, and throughout the overnight hours, it might hold together in places like Virginia and North Carolina, heck, maybe even South Carolina, as the uh, directional movement of this shifts more to the southeast as it rounds the upper and side base of this high pressure sitting over this part of the country. So let's talk about what kind of risk uh, criteria do we have in place today. Well, it's just a slight risk in this area, but let me tell you, there's some disagreement in models, and I think that's why they only have a slight risk over this portion of the country right now. We're not going to focus too much on this. We'll talk about this in a certain part of the video. Really focusing focusing in on this because this is a higher populated area. We'll talk about this here in a second. But this could get upgraded to an enhanced risk sometime later this morning. So if you're watching this and it's 11, 
12 o'clock and you're thinking, well, this is old information. I'm making this at around 7 a.m. Eastern time. This could very well get upgraded, especially seeing what it looks like as far as real-time observations and how this line of storms begins to materialize in this part of the country, Wisconsin, Iowa, and northern Illinois here in the coming hours. But uh, Chicago, uh, Cleveland, um, Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Detroit, you guys are under the gun today for the potential for a derecho. Now what that is is basically a quasi-linear line of storms. And now that doesn't mean we're going to get an all-out one of those because it, it, you know, it's definitely an argument in the weather community what to classify a derecho and what not because that is a very sensitive term in the weather community. But in general, think of this as an MCS, a mesoscale convective system. Think of it as a line of storms that can almost be like a bow echo in nature. Just think of it as a big-time damaging wind line of storms that can move through. And there's going to be plenty of fuel in the atmosphere in this area today to promote severe weather. The tornado threat is also there. Really, right up here near the base here, a 5% chance of a tornado in 25 miles in any given location, areas like Chicago, northern Indiana, and northern Ohio, it's something we need to really watch out for with this setup. The wind threat is the biggest threat. It really is. You have a 15% chance of damaging winds occurring, but you also have a 10% hatch risk in this black outlined area right here to see stronger winds of 65 knots or higher. If you don't know what 65 knots is, that is some pretty high wind speed. Just think of that as anywhere from 60 to 70, 75 miles per hour. It's certainly possible that's going to cause damage to uh, a lot of things, even especially small, even medium-sized trees, and especially if you already have some loose tree limbs, things like that, and it obviously can blow things around your yard, and it can just cause a lot of damage, knock down power lines, and obviously, in each little segment of these line of storms, there could be more intense areas that can cause a lot more damage, guys. So this is going to be intense today. And one thing I am concerned about is there's a hail threat in the same risk. So you could have wind-driven hail, hail blowing sideways, causing damage to house houses. This is the kind of setup you have. You have such a dynamic and big-time thermodynamic atmosphere in this region of the country today. And uh, the heat is going to be very intense just south and southwest of these lines of storms and it's just going to be dangerous today i really think it is and i really would not be surprised if this upgrades to an enhanced risk it might not but we'll see because the nam is much different than the hrr model the hrr model is much more aggressive so let's talk about that ring of fire and what's really going on here and really today this is where the center of high pressure will be over areas of the deep south and mid-atlantic so the, all the energy flows at the upper base of this. This is the jet. So think of this as where all the storms and pieces of energy flow around. So you see these wind bars that, you know, this part of the wind bar is moving this way or is on this side of the wind bar. That means that the wind directions are coming from this way. So it's moving around this base of the high pressure, the upper base, and then it comes down and then it goes around it like this. So it kind of moves in this direction. So storms move in this direction around it. Now, depending on where this is positioned, really just depends on where the storms are. So in general, um, uh, the track of the storms is going to be through the Ohio Valley, then potentially through the Mid-Atlantic, and then we'll have to see how much they hold together later on this evening and overnight. So we're eight, nine minutes into this video, and we're just talking about what's going to go on. So I hope you guys have stuck with me because this is the most important part of the video is actually seeing what's going to unfold. So we're taking a look here at areas of southern Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. What could happen today? Well, moving forward, um, this is around mid to late morning across areas of Wisconsin, Illinois. You're already seeing energy right here starting to move through. Let's fix this to one hour intervals. So this is around late morning to midday, around lunchtime. Chicago, some storms can move through. Milwaukee, watch out. This moves on through. Now, there's a potential this really doesn't get its act together until after it gets past Chicago and Illinois. So really, southern areas of Michigan, Indiana, this is when I really think this comes together. This becomes the hottest part of the day, the really daytime heating. Dew points are well into the 70s ahead of this line. Uh, mixed layer cape is probably two, 3,000 joules per kilogram. Just think of that as fuel to the atmosphere that these storms are going to try to take advantage of. Well, they will take advantage of. So Indianapolis, watch out around, you know, anywhere from 2 to 4 p.m. this afternoon, maybe earlier. These tend to move a little quicker than forecasted sometimes, but sometime early to mid this afternoon, Indiana, 
uh, Indianapolis, a nasty line of storms, moves through, really packs a punch, damaging winds, isolated tornado threat, large hail, all at risk, but damaging winds the highest. This will continue to move through. We're starting to get into the late afternoon, evening hours. Um, this starts to move into, into Ohio. Watch out down there near Louisville. It's potential. This could clip you guys. It could get dangerous down here, too. It might not be doing a great job showing the real true southern extent of this line, but it could be doing a great job. We really won't know until we get into about mid to early this afternoon, midday to early this afternoon. Detroit, you guys will be on the northern end of this, but you know it could be intense up there. Watch out Cleveland a little bit later. Now, this is when the directional motion of these storms start to shift. They start to move through Ohio this evening around dinner time. Watch out on your commute home. It's going to get dangerous. And this starts to shift more from a west to east direction to more of a kind of a northwest to southeast movement as high pressure is down here. And the wind movement, the wind movement, the directional movement of the winds is going like this around the base of this high pressure, which is positioned down here. So this begins to shift and move southeast. And it's still very intense as the sun's beginning to set. It's probably about 7, 8, 9 p.m. at this time. So... These storms are very powerful, moving into the extreme eastern sections of Kentucky, starting to move into the western sections of West Virginia. And there's still storms popping off here in Michigan. There's still some storms in northeast Indiana at this point as you're getting to about 8, 9 p.m. Ohio, even behind this line of storms. In fact, this could turn into a cluster of storms also. But as we get later into the night, this stops. And this is the last frame we have at the 18-hour latest HRRR model. And there's still a lot of storms behind this, still developing. In fact, this can develop into its own mesoscale convective system, its own line of storms after this a little bit later tonight. But we'll have to see how this forms. But really, this is the biggest punch right here that will move through. We'll shift a little bit more southeast, and here it is. Here's this big line of storms. Now, there is big disagreement on whether this will actually happen down here. But I have some high confidence that it will and uh, normally you can go uh, towards the more aggressive convective outputs in these kind of situations. I just just off experience in the history of looking at the weather in my, uh, you know, 15 years of really looking at it and trying to predict it my own way. I've noticed that in these setups, you can really go after the more aggressive uh, convective scenario. But I could be totally wrong. But watch out. Charleston, West Virginia. This is OT, O2Z Tuesday, so think of this as around, and I'll never give an exact hour. I'm always going to say 9, 10, 11 p.m. So because it's going to buffer you know, a little bit from hour to hour. So this could be anywhere from 9 to 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Line of storms moves through the base of West Virginia. And will they still be hanging on by the time they make it to southwest Virginia? It's a big question. But damaging winds working through. This will be a little bit later tonight, well after the sun goes down. And this will try to sneak into the Carolinas, into the overnight hours, and we'll go on and fast forward to that. And here it is. It's obviously losing steam at this point. But, you know, it just goes to show you how long lived this is. This starts off in, like, southern Wisconsin. And by the time you get into about midnight, it's already starting to make its way into North Carolina. It really shows you how impressive this is. And maybe some leftover convection. I hope we get some rain down here in the Midlands of South Carolina. I'd tell you that. But in general, if you keep moving this forward, you can see another area that moves through. That is actually what's left over of that convection I was mentioning right here. And in fact, you go on and switch this to, uh, to 6Z, which is the latest long range model. This is 07Z. You can actually see this convection behind this that forms behind this and turns into a line of storms itself. So this would mean that central Ohio Areas like that and surrounding regions could get hit twice um, into, you know, the late afternoon, evening hours and then hit again into the overnight hours. Same thing with West Virginia. So it's just ongoing convection that continues to pop off here. So in general, we look at see to see what's going on as a whole. And uh, this is the NAM. The NAM is totally different. The NAM doesn't really have much at all. I mean, it has some showers and storms down here, but it really likes the idea of this being a little bit more north and moving into areas of like the central sections of Lake Michigan, things like that, and really slamming Michigan pretty hard. But I don't, I just don't know about the NAM. The NAM looks very odd. It doesn't match very, very well 
with the uh, Storm Prediction Center and what they're talking about. But really what's fueling this is it's, it's pretty simple. There's a lot of low level moisture. These are dew points and the, let me make sure we got this going correct. Dew points are pretty high, guys. I mean, there, there's not a question at the low level moisture at the surface, which these storms eat up. I mean, we're going into about mid morning, getting into early afternoon. Dew points ahead of this line of storms, which is starting to get its act together. Indianapolis dew points could be into the mid to upper 70s. That is extremely humid air. So you have a ton of humid air ahead of this, a lot of low level moisture for these storms to really fuel off of. In response to these high level dew points, you have a lot of cape. And let's switch, switch this over to mixed layer cape. And in general, you have a ton, a ton of energy. Now, this probably is a little overdone, but uh, I mean, this is. In general, you can probably cut this down a little bit, but this is mixed layer cape. This is cape reaching four or 5,000 joules per kilogram. When you see this, when you look at this on your screen, think of this as fuel. Think of this as you got a line of storms right here, right, moving through these areas. And think of this as fuel ahead of these storms for this convection to really eat up and feed off of and really... Um, uh, really help the updraft, if you will. Some of these storms will be spinning, so there will be a chance for a tornado with this line of storms, which are very dangerous. They're normally embedded, and this will be a fast-moving complex of storms that will be moving through and producing big-time damaging winds. So if there is a tornado in this, you're not really going to see it, and if you see it, it's going to be coming at you very quickly. Let's talk about the rest of the country. Southeast, very hot today. You're going to be begging for a pop-up shower or thunderstorm, even though the humidity normally increases with it. But in general, not much. Now, I will say that you will probably have more pop-up showers and storms than what this is showing. But in general, pretty quiet day. Not a whole lot going on. And we're watching and see if this survives and makes it into Virginia and Carolinas a little bit later this and overnight tonight. The Northeast in general... Maine, you guys will continue to see a lot of showers and storms, and that'll be the case throughout the late morning and early afternoon and evening hours. You guys are going to have some showers and storms moving through. And then we're watching areas like PA. I don't think you guys are going to get affected much by the storms today, but it's potential you could, you could. So definitely watch out here in Pennsylvania. But in general, the interior northeast, very quiet today weather-wise. South central U.S., the good news is, as I'm about to show the temperatures here in a second, you guys cool off a little bit today. It's still hot. But you're not going to be just entrenched deep into the hundreds in the heart of Texas and things like that. Main, mainly the upper 90s, maybe the, maybe the low 100s in certain areas. But some storms could fire up along a dry line here in uh, western areas of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. But in general, pretty quiet. North central U.S. is going to be pretty active in the areas of the Dakotas where some storms could fire up in the northern plains. We'll watch out for these a little bit later today. Um, I know I haven't mentioned this much, but watch out for some nasty storms. Really, anywhere in the Dakotas today, you guys could definitely see some supercells. Uh, just pretty much all hazards, just low end of the hazards that you need to watch out for. But everybody else, maybe some showers making its way into northern Michigan. And uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin, I think, besides the ruckus that you will see this morning, will remain pretty quiet. Temperatures today... Pretty brutal across the southeast. In fact, where I live, I'm expecting us to hit our first 100-degree reading in two years. Um, we'll see if it happens. If it doesn't, our American will probably be just shy around 99. But watch out Fayetteville to Columbia to Augusta. You guys could certainly hit 100 degrees today. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all. We'll break. I think that will likely break a record. But the, the most of the northeast, you continue to cling to um, more calm weather, stable weather. And just not that hot. You guys are being saved as the ridge is really building across this part of the country. But the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, southern Indiana, southern Illinois could both hit 100 degrees a day. Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, it's naming off, you know, about 20 of the 50 states here. Um, you guys all have an at-risk chance to get to the mid to upper 90s to around 100 degrees a day. It's going to be very hot. Very uncomfortable as this ridge of high pressure really builds into this area. But the nastiest humid air is going to be in this part of the country right here. Okay, so that is where, you know, you're going to walk outside and it just feels absolutely awful out there. So please take precautions with this heat. But that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I know it was a longer video. But I want to keep you guys weather aware. 
for what's going to unfold today. It's going to be a very active day. God bless all y'all, and y'all have a great day.